you know that Jesus is soon to return? Oh, y'all don't know, huh? Do you know that Jesus is soon to return? All right, look at somebody and say, it's time to get your house in order. It's time to get your house in order because the Lord is soon to return. So I'm going to share something with you based on the topic that you guys have been dealing with. Look at somebody and say, a sanctified place. A sanctified place. Amen. A sanctified place place so y'all been talking about holiness and those things y'all know that that's the church that jesus is returning for right amen, amen. now the church that jesus the, the way the church looked before the pandemic wasn't ready pandemic came clean the church up cleaned it out those that don't have faith won't see Jesus. So the pandemic came to see who had faith. Let's see. You don't have to. Woo! You don't have to clap. I brought, I brought clappers. I brought clappers. Just in case. Folk was going to look at me crazy. Yeah. Oh, there's some folks that, oh, they were so anointed and, oh, they could speak in every tongue. floated in the church to the front row just in the air feet never touched the ground oh but the news said there was a variant out and they stay home can I preach in this place you don't mind if I tell the truth do you because they stay home oh but they don't stay home long because they do go to Target and Walmart and Home Depot and they go on vacation to different towns they get on planes but they ain't coming to church but you know what you can't worry about them they're out of church intentionally God allowed a plague to hit our world to test our faith to show the remnant in this last hour yeah small groups of people don't bother me one that don't bother me. Let them get as small as they need to get. Jesus started with 5,000, shrunk that down to 300. Then the Bible said his sayings were hard, and the 300 bounced. Then he ended up with 12, and one of them wasn't right. Yeah. So, hey, that's just, look at somebody say, that's Holy Ghost mathematics. Holy Ghost mathematics. It's just going to happen. So don't you worry. You just make sure you're, look at somebody and say, get your house in order. Make sure you are ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, he's coming back looking for a sanctified place. I'm going to try my best to stick to these slides because I feel like this is very important. And I'm going to start out talking about a story that is it definitely speaks to the time we are living in and it is the story of Moses amen some of y'all have read it have you read the story of Moses now I'm not talking about the prince of Egypt I know you saw the cartoon but have you read the story amen some things in the cartoon was questionable but the Bible speaks of this situation and it pertains to us because this was God's opportunity to get his people to a sanctified place his people were in bondage <clears throat> in bondage in Egypt they were under Pharaoh they were around false gods surrounded by unbelieving false god worship and God heard their cries and was ready to move them to a sanctified place this is what is happening right now the churches have to become a sanctified place if they're gonna stay open you never thought you'd see the day when the mega church was no more matter of fact the mega church made the smaller churches feel bad like the smaller churches didn't have faith to be mega and now the mega churches are on zoom Yeah, they're selling their buildings. 
selling their buildings back to the city because they can't get church folks to come. Can I preach in here? Exodus 5 and 1. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me. Where? Not in Egypt. A feast unto me where? In the wilderness. Now you're pretty bad to go to Pharaoh and say, let the people go so we can go hold a feast to a God that's greater than you. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Y'all still with me? All right. God's people were slowly losing their identity. The 12 tribes of Israel all of them it had become over a million people but they were slowly losing their identity they were becoming slaves to egypt slaves and building the false god pyramids or whatever the the, the statues whatever they became the workers and they were losing their identity of being god's people they were in egypt surrounded by pagan influence and under the rule of false god worshipers does sound familiar does it sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. God wanted to give them their own place. A sanctified, look at somebody say sanctified. Now that ain't no old Kojic word. Some folks just don't, they, they associate that with, you know, the old church I came out of. Sanctified. No, nope. God wanted to find them, or God wanted them to have a sanctified place. Set apart is what sanctified means. Set apart from the world, free from false gods and bondage of the world. God battled Pharaoh with plagues against the gods of Egypt to bring his people from among them so they could have their own what? He, God battled them with plagues. Now, y'all know God could have just blew it all up. He didn't want to. He chose to battle each individual God of Egypt with a plague that was against their God. All nine of their most powerful gods of Egypt got challenged by the plagues from God. He wanted to show who was in charge. And he's meticulous about it. He, chal he challenged each and every one of Egypt's gods. When God wants the world to see him, he uses who? When God wants the world to see him, he uses who? His people to show signs and wonders God could have blew it all up but he would rather have Moses go in there and say God said y'all still with me all right more of the story and Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said go ye sacrifice to your God in the land this after the flies came and Pharaoh said now these flies got to go so go on and go. Y'all can go, but you got to sacrifice to your God. Where? Here in Egypt. Moses said, mm, I don't think we have a deal, Pharaoh. It is not meat so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Meaning we're going to burn animals. And these are the animals that represent y'all's gods. He said, Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? You're going to get us killed. Because when we put the animal on the altar and burn it, they're going to think we are making fun of their gods. Because they worship all the animals. Right? Folk do that now. 
You go over your cousin's house and a bird head is in the window next to a crystal and burning sage and all that old foolishness. They're doing it. They're doing it. Man, I like that eagle medallion you got. That's not an eagle. That's the mighty phoenix. <laughs> it will rise again. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> You got that at the gas station. <laughs> we will go three days. He said, we're going to go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. Now, this is important to understand because this was God saying, you can't worship false gods and worship me. When you worship me, you got to get away from the false God. There's a church back in Dallas. Got onks all in the baptism. Onks on every seat. The Egyptian symbol, the Coptic, so-called Coptic cross. Yeah. You can't worship God in that church. And that church has been closed for two years with a Black Lives Matter sign on it. Seats 5,000 people. Three pyramids on top. Empty empty you don't have faith to gather you don't even have faith to fight false gods you don't have faith to worship the true and living God you know it takes faith to worship God you know it takes faith to come together oh that's okay I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep going though I ain't scared of nobody's face I'm telling you <laughs> it takes faith this is the real faith time. Not you just trying to get a job and oh, when you fill out the application, oh, you shot ta 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 and all of that. And you got the job and oh, we need some groceries. Blah, 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 shop. And that, yeah, you, you that was that was all. Yeah, yeah, you thought you was really working some faith. Well, come together and not worry about getting sick. Hey, real faith is not fearing death. You afraid of death? No, bro. You afraid of death? That's real faith. Huh. Remember when the pandemic first hit and they made us go outside and have church and we went out there. We had church, several hundred cars outside. We took the sound system out there and we were out there, I forgot how many weeks, but each week we had more and more speakers. We bought speakers weekly because we were going to turn the whole city out. We start setting up speakers. Pastor, we got so loud, had such a good time. The city came and said, uh, I think it's time for y'all to go back inside. Am I telling the truth? Our church grew 150 people during that pandemic. Because we was outside evangelizing. Don't put us outside. Really, you know, there's nothing you can do with us. Because wherever you put us, we're going to give God the glory that he deserves. Amen? Ain't nobody afraid of die. Are you afraid to die? Do you really believe this? If you really believe it, you're not afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and what? A sound mind. Could you even heal a leper? Could you pray for a leper? When you're worried about an advanced cold and flu. Can I keep preaching in here? I'm not walking in fear. You think I'm going to spend the last days, the end times where we are right now walking in fear? And this whole thing is about to be over? This whole thing ain't nothing but rehearsal for the mark of the beast? You think I'm going to... Let me, let me finish. So God was trying to get his people away from the false God so they could worship him in spirit and in truth. God wants an earthly identity. He wants to be known in the earth. 
What does the church look like if we're afraid? If the world sees us, what about us will attract them to God? They see us scared, believing everything the news say, everything social media say. They see us walking in fear. Would they ever want what we have? God wants an earthly identity. He wants the world to see him and experience him through our peace and holiness. Do you have peace? You can't have peace and fear. I thank God I was able, even at our church, to speak prophetically way back. Before all of this stuff jumped off, before they even had the vaccine, I was able to speak prophetically to say that they were going to mandate it for you to be able to work. Y'all remember me saying that? That was before it was even a thing. But I knew it was happening. I knew they had to rehearse this mark. So they were going to use this. They were going to use something and make you take something that they say don't work. But you still going to take it. Then they're going to make you take something else and they're going to tell you it don't work. But out of fear, you still going to take it. You're going to keep taking stuff that don't work. It's okay. Let that. If it ain't going to work, you don't have to clap for me. You can get mad at me or you can get on the. I, you can do whatever. It still ain't going to work. <laughs> What they putting in you is not go, it's not gonna work. It's like a weapon formed against you. It just won't work. What's that song? It just won't work. It just won't work. It's not gonna work. And it's never gonna work. It ain't designed to work. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which what? This is a holiness conference. Okay, but you can't speak holiness without speaking peace because both of them are in the same passage. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which what? <laughs> Many churches today are lacking peace and holiness. They are fearful of death to the point of not gathering and no longer believing that God gives life and heals diseases. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, what? They know that one. They know that one. But they don't know the next one. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And what? Forget not what? How many of his benefits? All of his benefits. Because he does what? Heals all our what? Diseases. Forgive us all of our sins and heals all of our same Bible. Somebody should have wrote a song about that one and you would know it. Those are his benefits. Is he still a healer? Do he still heal all of your diseases? Are we talking about the same? See, let me tell you something. Oh, there's a trick. If the devil can make you doubt an attribute of God, you'll question the existence of God. All he needs you to do is doubt one attribute. One thing in the word that you're not too sure of. Well, I don't know if he'll heal or protect me from the virus. I don't know. Then you begin to question everything. Then you become black Hebrew Israelite. That's the path. Once you deny an attribute of God, you deny God. He says to come to him, you got to believe he is. So if you don't believe he's a healer, you don't believe he's God. And if you don't believe he's a protector, you don't believe he's God. preaching here boy you should see the way they're looking at me pastor god i'm glad i'm not sensitive 
to many church folks COVID is their pastor and the news is testimony service they got the news on all day every day oh and the latest report the ticker tape the latest report is the latest amount of deaths and the deaths and the, the latest amount that's testimony service and they sitting there all day oh god oh god when i walk outside on it and you know when you don't watch it you just walk around Just hug everybody. You get a little slob on me. I don't care. Brother, are you kidding? My God is a healer. Why would I be scared of my brother and my sister? Why would I be scared of loving those that God has called to be around me? Those that God has called to pour into me. Those that God has called to uphold me. Why would I be afraid? What has happened to the church? Sit down. Glad I'm in shape. <laughs> you can't do that, doctor. You, you got to get on your motorcycle and do it. <laughs> COVID is the pastor. Doctor, <laughs> doctor Earl Carter said he's the presiding bishop. And his jurisdiction is everywhere. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and the news. The news. Now, I've uploaded it several times on our page and everything where I take news clips from news outlets all over the world and they're all reading a script. And I got them going back to back, repeating the same thing over and over, everywhere, over and over. And over. Reading the script, huh? See, I'm going to tell you what our problem. We put our faith and our confidence in billionaires instead of God. So because they give us food, jobs, money, and all of this, we trust them. We don't believe that, they are that revelations is going to unfold in their hearts. We're comfortable. We don't believe at some point somebody's going to stand up, claim to be God, and in this world and he's going to need people so blind that he can say it and they believe it without questioning it those are people that believe they can take something that don't work they tell you it don't work do it stop the spread? no Okay, well, what, what does it do? Nothing! But we need you to take it. It does something. We're just not ready to tell y'all what it does right now. That's going to be a little later. I promise you, that's going to be a little later. Look for that round November this year. You're going to find out what it really does. It ain't got nothing to do with a disease. I will preach this. I don't care if they turn me off online. You, they know. Man, they have tried everything. I'm telling you, boy. Woo, they done, tried, they done came out the G. Craig. But I don't care because it's the truth. Thank you, sister, back there in the red. Clap loud. Thank you. Thank you. I need some encouragement because I'm getting some ugly faces. God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So even when Pharaoh give up, I'm going to harden his heart so I can do a little more. Somebody has a problem with that. Well, what is God doing? God made Pharaoh. So God can do whatever he want to do to Pharaoh. If he want to put strings on him and just puppeteer him, he can. Because he's God. Look at somebody and say, don't you question God. You let God be God. God hardened his heart so you would see what he protected his people from. He wanted you to see his love. The stuff that came up on the Egyptians didn't come up on his people. 
the Bible said, even with the darkness, it got so dark until you could feel the darkness. You know how dark that is? Said it was darkness that could be felt. But the Israelites had what? Light. <laughs> when the balls and the sores, all the sicknesses, everything that came on him, God said, if y'all obey me, I won't bring these things up on you. But you got to have faith. Look at somebody say, you got to have faith. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by what? Great judgments. And when I'm done, when I'm done, God says, when I'm done, the Egyptians shall know what? That I'm the Lord. When who stretched forth his hand? I thought Moses stretched forth his hand with the rod. No, no. The rod in Moses' arm was just a representation of what God was doing. God stretched his hand upon Egypt to bring out the children of Israel from among them. That's why you got to be careful messing with God's people. Messing with God's pastors and leaders. Because just as Moses stretched out his hand, God said, nope, that's me stretching my hand out. You know who found out the hard way? Moses' little sister. Because at one point she said, well, you know, I don't really like the woman that Moses married. He married somebody that wasn't of our people. And I just really don't know. And I just, bam, leprosy. Now get out the camp with that witchcraft. God said, I chose him. You don't question who. Anyway, that's another sermon. You got to bring me back. Amen. Can I keep preaching in here? I feel like I'm preaching, but man, I just ain't getting room participation. Some folk in here just got problems with it. Oh, but they will go to the store. Ain't no social distancing at the bank. They ain't gonna get their money out the bank, but they come to church. How you doing, sister? Oh, <laughs> oh. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing, doing all right. <laughs> you stay back. <laughs> hmm. Hugging they boss at work. <laughs> Give me another one. <laughs> but at church. <laughs> Got new church signals. Man, what has happened to us? What happened? And I tell folks all the time, and I'm going to get back to this, but I tell folks all the time. You thought COVID and all of this was about a disease and a shot and all that. You know what it was really about? Shutting the church down. Look at somebody. What did it do? Shut the church. Shut the church down. Who's the enemy of the devil? The church. Who did God boast about and say the gates of hell shall not prevail against what the church god picked a jesus picked the fight he said the gates of hell are not gonna prevail against the church so you don't think that that's the devil's plan to shut the church down to prove jesus wrong because jesus spoke it so you mean to tell me the devil, the devil would go through all this trouble just to stop the church? What other enemy does he have? Why would he stop the witches? They work for him. Why would he stop the LGBT? They live for him. Why would he stop the club, the strip club? Why would he stop all that? Why would he stop anything else? None of it matters. He controls it all. The one thing he doesn't control is what? The church. Look at somebody and say, holiness is our identity. Y'all, this is an end time message. So if you're not ready for the end times, then you're going to keep your attitude. Look at somebody and say, holiness, holiness. 
is our identity this is what makes us us holiness it's good you having a holiness conference because the church got a little unholy didn't we dresses got a little tight cleavage got a little low men and women <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling the truth. I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. Dudes got a little flirty. Amen. Hugging y'all wrong. Why you hugging me inside my coat? I... <laughs> Come here, sister. <laughs> Just, yeah, holiness. Holiness. Yeah, the world snuck in, kind of corrupted the church a little bit. And it's time for us to clean it up and get it ready and make it a bride that is ready. Look at somebody and say, clean yourself up. It's time to clean up. Put the blunt down. You got to stop smoking. That's unclean. It's not a sin. It's unclean. Look at your lungs before and after. It's unclean. Smoking cigarettes and wearing a mask. Something wrong with you. Something wrong. Something, something wrong. Something, something wrong with that. So, something is wrong with that. Something's wrong. Reggie, something's wrong with that. Y'all can get mad, but it ain't something wrong with that. Sexually promiscuous, but wearing a mask. You got it on the wrong end. Something is wrong. It's been a minute since I preached. I've been on vacation, so y'all excuse me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we we I don't understand. <laughs> you homosexual and wearing a mask. Bruh. <laughs> you worried about the wrong disease. The wrong virus. You worried about the wrong virus. Holiness is our identity. <laughs> Holiness is our identity. That's who we have to be. That's who God is requiring us to be. Amen. Holiness is not a denomination. It is not an outward appearance. Amen. Amen. It's not pants and makeup. And you know how they, you know, now, don't get me wrong. Some of this stuff, stuff is excessive. And we need to take it down a peg or two when we come into church. Amen. A amen. So holiness, but it's not a denomination. It's not an outward appearance. And it's not a character trait. Holiness is none of, the, it's none of those things. Holiness is the impartation of God's spirit within us to do what? modify what our behavior holiness is about the way you act see the church has tried hard to make it the way you look so they wear all the catholic stuff sometimes and put the giant cross in the pocket and they carry you know they got the whole look like the pope wearing the hat and coming in with the staff and all that to look holy that's not holiness right spraying on all the cologne and wearing the white stockings and the and the you know covering up the toes and the you know the sleeve and all that that's still not holiness no because those same folks will hate somebody and think they're holy carry unforgiveness which is way worse than the sins you think you've conquered you think because you don't go to the Dice shack no more. <laughs> they had those here. <laughs> they had a woman though. The dice shack or the juke joint. <laughs> going to the because I don't go to the club and I don't cuss no more. And I you think no 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 no. Unforgiveness is worse than all of those. You carrying hatred for a loved one, a preacher. 
family member, a wayward father, a divorced spouse, a baby daddy. You carrying hatred is worse than the club. Because, I mean, if you carry unforgiveness, it's worse than the club because the Bible says if you carry unforgiveness, God is not going to forgive you. Boy, my time. Let me wrap this up, boy. This is a tough room right here, boy. Mm. Holiness is the impartation of God's spirit within us to modify our behavior. It should change the way we act. It should change the way we behave. It should change the way we treat people. It should change how we love people. It should make us keep our word and stop lying. That's holiness. Holiness makes us different from the world. That's the whole point. That's the whole point makes us different from the world but it starts with the infilling of the Holy Ghost in order to be holy we must be filled with the Holy One amen all right crowd the opposite of holiness is worldliness some folks just in love with the world when we are filled with the things of the world we are not filled with the holiness of God I'm going to break it down for you. Don't worry. One of the biggest problems with the church today is that they have adopted the world's philosophy and canceled out their holiness. This is what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened to the church. There is nothing different or peculiar about them. The world is not attracted. That's why the outreach ministry come back with nobody. That's why the healing line don't nobody get healed. Remember the prayer line they used people used to come, they, they ended that. Because wasn't nobody getting healed. I uh, keep preaching. Folks wasn't getting healed. Yeah. Because too much world was in it. Are you ready to give up the world for what you came up here for? Then go on back to your seat. I've been seeking for the Holy Ghost for 10 years and I still have an infant. That's because you won't give the world up. There's no room in you for the power of God. First John 2 and 15 tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are what? In the world. If any man loves the world the love of the father is what you think you're going to heaven without the love of the father he gotta love you first for you to be with him and reign with him forever he gotta love you first but if you'd rather have the world he'll let you have that for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. So everything you trying to get in the world is going to pass away anyway. But he that doeth the will of God does what? Can I keep preaching in here? Oh, folk don't like these kind of messages. That's my specialty. <laughs> A worldly church. Mm. I'm going to describe what's, what, what the church has done. Then we're going to pray afterward. We're going to pray for the spirit of fear to be broken. We're going to pray so we can be the church God is looking for. So we can all live right, do what we're supposed to be doing. All of that stuff. We're going to give it to God tonight. Amen. A worldly church. This is the worldly church. We seek after fame, likes, views, subscribers, hearts, and digital love instead of God. How much time do you spend on your phone and how much time do you spend with God? Wow. 
the phone will make you so self-absorbed you will be so into yourself trying to see what somebody else thinks about you I wish God had a page and you upload your stuff on his platform and let him judge the likes and the views yeah but that's what happens in the church we measure ourselves by worldly standards and not by God's standards we think we're okay but God doesn't believe that we're okay we feel like God is good with us and he's not because his word is against us and our behavior you better check with God we have replaced faith in God with our own passions and abilities we know what we can do so well that we replace God we don't need faith anymore and then when our faith is truly tested we fail our discipleship plans of the church have turned into a marketing course on how to fall with our own agendas we equated God with financial status oh my 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 the dude in the street handing out the the uh track and telling you god loves you brother god you just walk by him oh he dirty his shoes nasty he don't have nowhere to live so god can't be working through him because if god is if we have money god is blessing us but if we're broke the devil is cursing us that's what tbn taught us and the word network you know why they taught you that? Because they got to pay thousands of dollars to be on there. Oh, I stepped in something on that one. Man. Yeah, so it becomes about finances. We come to church, worship God because he's going to get us a good job. He's going to bless us financially. And then we don't have money. The devil is attacking us. Break that off of me. Break what off? Oh, the curse of the devil, the poverty. He's in my wallet. The devil got, why the devil ain't got nothing to do with your money? You broke because you broke. You need a better job. You spend too much. You too far in debt. That I guarantee if I sit you down, I can bring an atheist in there and we can figure it out. Uh, atheist accountant he can worship Beelzebub he can have horns if he's a good an accountant he's going to tell you the same thing <laughs> bro you spending more than you have you trying to live a lifestyle that you can't afford you going to equate that to God and the kingdom will oversee and the kingdom is, is not me to drink it's to keep talking righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost it's not money Yeah. I was walking in the streets of New York. Somewhere, I think, oh no, I was with my family. We were on vacation, just hanging out in New York. And we walked by this guy who was running this mission. Homeless dude, but he's handing out these little cards to help people or whatever. And he's just walking and handing them, everybody ignoring them or whatever, whatever. And I walked by him, he said, Ah, oh, no, no, don't walk by me, G. Craig Lewis. He said, Come on back. It was nothing but the spirit of the Lord. He didn't know me. I said, God, I want to know him. I want to know all those that you are using. And I don't care about their financial status. If you're using them. Church taught us wrong. Now, let me bring some balance. You got to have money to pay your bills. You do need a job. Amen. 
You got to balance your checkbook, your, your, your debit book, whatever they got now. Your doji coins, whatever you're doing. You got you to gotta have some sense about it. And you have to work because if you don't work, you don't eat. Amen. And if you're a man that don't work, you're disobeying God's command in the garden. So you got extra problems. Women weren't made to take care of you. You supposed to work. You That was your punishment. Women supposed to have the babies. And I ain't trading with them. I like the arrangement. It's a good one. It makes sense. It makes sense. Do it make sense, folks? I like, I like God's arrangement. Can I keep preaching in here? What time is it? Am I all right? Man, I feel like I'm at home. Something about these flags. I see these flags. I just go to preach it. <laughs> so we equated God with, fi with financial status. If we have money, God is blessing us. If we are broke, the devil is cursing us. That's a lie. That's a lie. That is a lie. Sometimes you're going to have money. Sometimes you're not going to have money. Money does not equate with how much Holy Ghost power you have. We pushed our children. Oh, look at this. Whoa. Ow. Oh, the church did this. The church did this. But you know what? The church cut their own legs off. You know how the church cut their legs off? Where the young people at? They ain't in church no more. They cut their legs off. They made the kids go after the world. We didn't pass down God's heritage. <laughs> we pushed our children to get educated and have financial success instead of teaching them how to be good husbands, wives, and good parents. That's what sustains the church. Husbands, wives, good parents. That's how you build a church. Cut our legs off. Made them run out there and get indoctrinated. By the Greek gods. The same false gods they worship in the Bible are the ones they're pledging to. The same one Paul called devils. So you can't eat at the table of God and the table with devils. He was referring to these same Greek gods that they're pledging to in these sororities and fraternities. And the devil knew we get them to pledge to them. They won't stay in church. And if they are in church, they have a messed up understanding of it because they're trying to serve two masters pushed our children to get educated and didn't teach them how to be good husbands. We didn't speak that on them. You're supposed to speak that on your child. You're going to be a good husband. You're going to be a good wife. No, man, they three years old. You done put a stethoscope on them. And, oh, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to be a nurse. Oh, you're going to be, you, you done already decided their profession. So when it's time to take the mark of the beast so you can work, What you think they gonna choose? Our heritage from God was replaced with prestige and notoriety. You let your own issues that you had, your issues make you push your children with no consideration of them being a good human being. You didn't care about her keeping her virginity. You never even talked about it. You gave her condoms and sent her off to school. You didn't talk to him about having character and not going with every girl he see and breaking up with him. You didn't teach none of that. Get the education, no matter what it costs. You got him in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Don't worry about it. You'll pay it back later. Well, what if they got to get the mark of the beast to pay it back? If they don't have no character, they're going to get the mark. Replace the heritage of God. Heritage of God. Teach your children. Son, when you get old enough, you need to get a good wife. 
And when you have children, you teach them what God did in his word. You teach them about how God. Matter of fact, let me tell you what God did for me. This is what you teach your wife, your husband. This is what you teach your children. These are the things you talk about in your home. You don't walk around wanting money and success all the time. Yeah, the young folks, where are they? They're vacating the churches because the churches pushed them. We raise boys to be weak men. Ooh, goodness. Looking for women to take care of them like their mothers did. Hmm. You taught that boy to hate his father because you didn't like him. He grew up, he don't want to look nothing like him. Matter of fact, he'd rather look like you. So you braid his hair. Put earrings on him. Mm -hmm. Looking for women to take care of them, like their mamas did. These boys become narcissists. You know what a narcissist is? It's basically somebody that can't ever get saved. They're so in love with themselves that they can never love the Lord. That's a narcissist. Manipulate women, dominate them, ruin households as men. Mess daughters, mess sons. They mess their whole family up. Run straight through them because they want all the attention. They want to be mama like mama mama them. They want to be king. Because they were their mama's king. Yeah. yeah, same boys, raised, weak, looking like that. Yeah, I don't care how they look. They tat put tattoos on their face now. I don't care. I'll just go get some money from mama. And then when she don't have no more, I find me a girl. They out there. You know, the ones, the girls that was pushed to strive and wasn't taught how to be a wife. They was just taught to go forward. And as they're going forward, they need a little something, something, so they'll go get this raggedy boy just to have something, something. I feel like I'm preaching. We raise girls to be independent women that look to control and emasculate men. They want to go and get under a ministry where they can snatch their man up by the neck and make him do stuff. Manipulate him. Oh boy, how you, now you know I close shop on you. Yeah, that's manipulation. That's witchcraft. That's Jezebel. Yeah. You acting like a donkey in the car. Oh, I get out. Let me out right now on this freeway. Let me out. Now you know I'm not going to let. Let me out. Oh, oh, oh. Let her out. That's what I tell him. Let her out on the freeway. Let her out. Manipulation. Manipulation. That's manipulation. Make him do what you want him to do. That's what we've taught our girls to do. But you know, they don't do that no more. They ain't got to kick like a donkey. They don't yell and scream no more. You know what they do now? Let's go buy some crystals. You ain't seen on Instagram yet? All the young black ladies now? They all practice witchcraft. All of them. All of them. Page after page after page after page. They're witches. You don't know they're witches. You just see them. You don't know what. They, it's witchcraft. Trust me. They go get some crystals and manipulate a boy. And, so, uh, 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 and I'm talking young, 16, 17, 18 years old. Witches. Burning sage to cleanse the atmosphere. Yep. Using the metaphysical signs and symbolism. Mm hmm. Witchcraft. Because you taught them to be independent. You taught them that, you, you taught them something that the Bible didn't teach. Women weren't designed that way.
Hmm. You taught them against God, so now they with the devil. These women caused the home to be out of order and raised their children to rebel. This will make, all of this will make the mark of the beast and the beast system irresistible to this generation because they were not taught how to truly trust God. That's what this is all about. Instead, they were taught how to get ahead, succeed, and excel in the world. Some churches don't ever need to open again because you wasn't teaching nothing when you was open. Some folk don't need to go back either. Go on your vacation. Go to the grocery store. Go to Walmart. Don't come to church. Because you ain't going to do what the preacher is saying anyway. We must be sanctified holy and reserved unto God to experience him in this hour. It's the only way we're going. Sanctified holy. Set apart from the world. Holiness is our identity. Holiness. Holiness. Without an identity, we are comfortably coexisting with the world. There is no proof of our sanctification without it being manifested outwardly in our actions. It's the only proof there is. Oh, but the evidence is the speaking in the tongue. No, bro. The evidence is the fruits of the Spirit. He said you will know them by what? Their fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If you don't have those, you don't have the spirit. A Hindu can speak in tongues. The Bible said you will know them by what? The fruit. There is no proof of our sanctification without it being manifested outwardly in our actions. Being sanctified means you are allowing the fruits of God's spirit to operate through you. Severing your ties to worldliness and sin. And it don't happen instantly. It's a work for some people. Some of us was raised on the rough side of the roughest side of the mountain. Amen. And it took time for sanctification to really, really come. God had to work with us. The pastor had to work with us. Anybody the pastor had to work with? Yeah. The grace of God had to be in operation 24-7, 365. God, I need your grace. Because you're coming, you coming out of years of bondage. Look what the children of Israel went through after all of those years in bondage. Moses just didn't understand but God understood they murmuring I mean day one oh where's the food man we should have stayed in Egypt day one man y'all just saw walls of water up on both sides walking on dry land you saw whales and the hippopotamus they, they ain't in the ocean are they you, you saw big stuff in the ocean cause you was down at the floor and you walked through and I mean, day one, I'm hungry. We should have stayed. <laughs> That's bondage. It took time for God to sanctify them wholly unto himself. Being sanctified means you are allowing the fruits of God's spirit to operate through you. Severing your ties to worldliness and sin. The issues from your past must be settled by the fruits of God's spirit dwelling in you. The issues from your past must be settled. You can't fake holiness. You can't dress holiness. You can't show holiness. Faith has to activate the fruit against your issues. The issues from your past must be settled by the fruits of God's spirit dwelling in you. This is true holiness. Amen. And I'm closing with this scripture. Amen. First Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not 
that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you if listen if any man defile the temple of God him shall what for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are we are let no man deceive you let I don't care who the preacher is don't you let him deceive you I don't care who it is don't let him deceive you if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise forget what the world is telling you forget what the world has said become a fool like me you see how foolish I am up here talking against the pandemic that everybody on earth is scared of you hear me Ooh, I sound like a blithering idiot because I'm a fool so I could be made wise everyone stand to your feet we are gonna believe God that the spirit of fear will be no more you will not listen you will not walk around in fear God has not given us that spirit we're gonna be that church that end time remnant we are the last ones we are the last ones everyone bow your head father God we just thank you Lord for this message we thank you for your truth as a matter of fact those of you, anyone that's battling that spirit, the spirit of fear, I want you to just come up and we're going to all pray together. Just come on. Anybody. Anybody. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's real. It's real. I, I know. I, it's real. It's real. And I want it off. I want it gone. I want it gone. Y'all, I have to break the spirit of fear every day. Every day. You watch two minutes of the news and you back to square one. My God fear for losing your job to a mandate fear for this for whatever we're gonna break it today anyone come on come on whoever you are we're gonna break the spirit we're gonna break it and we're gonna trust and believe in the most high god who is still god do y'all realize that the power of god is still here so as see we're in here right now because the power of god is here if the power is here it's sufficient for what we need in this hour and I'm not giving up on that I'm, I, as long as I'm here and the spirit of the Lord is here I'm going to call on God for help amen anyone else come on whoever you are come on up come on and we're going to pray we're going to pray we're going to pray and we're going to break it we're going to break it break it break it come on come on just come on come on and if, I'm, if while I'm praying if you still want to come up this is God's altar not mine everyone bow your heads Father God we just thank you Lord thank you God for a message of truth in this hour thank you Father God for speaking in this place thank you Father God for giving us truth in a time where truth is rare and scarce Father God we thank you Lord for your truth and I thank you for every heart that responded to it Father God every person that was sensitive to it every person in here Father God that is struggling to just be free from fear in this last hour Father God the just our thought processes all we see and hear everything that comes across our feet everything is negative negative fear fear they're trying to scare us all into submission but father we're only submitting to you and we believe you are here we believe your power is here we believe your power is greater than the world we father god believe that you are still a healer we believe you're still a deliverer we believe you will still set us free so we won't be bound by what the devil is saying we won't be bound by what the elite are doing father god we won't be bound what by what bill gates has concocted dr fauci is lying about elon musk whoever they are father god we won't listen i don't care how much money they have we know you are our god and you're gonna get us to that sanctified place you're gonna place us in the place where you will have us so we don't follow the world we don't repeat their lies we don't let what they say get in our hearts because we've been set apart. 
sanctified, filled with your Holy Ghost power. We will not submit to the world. But Father God, we submit to you. So right now, we break the spirit of fear. Right now, you have not given us the spirit of fear. So we speak right now, power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name over fear. Power over deception. Power over strong delusion. And Father, we speak love. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Father, we will love our neighbors. We will forgive those that have hurt us. We let them go right now. No unforgiveness in our heart. We let them go. Let them go right now. The person that hurt us. The person that did us wrong. We let them go. With love. And finally you said you have not given us the spirit of fear. But power, love and a sound mind. I speak sound mind in this place right now. Sound sleep. No more fear. No more heart murmurs. Our hearts will not fail us because of fear. We will not have fear. We will not walk in fear. Father God, I speak health right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I speak good health habits. I speak against the migraines. Father God, I speak against the body aches. I speak against the cough, the inflamed lungs. All of the things that they're trying to do through electromagnetic frequency and all the stuff they're spreading. Father, I speak against it right now. Our minds will be sound. They will not be altered. You won't alter our DNA, devil. You won't alter our genetics, devil. We will have a sound mind mind and our mind will choose Christ our mind will choose God and his plan for us and we will see him and he, he will smile on us and take us back with him in the name of Jesus we pray thank you Lord come on and give God some praise thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Oh, I'm going to tell you to get bold. And I want you to hug somebody and say, the spirit of fear is not in me anymore. Come on, hug somebody. Come on and hug some Spirit of fear is gone. In the name of Jesus, I won't be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence that's all a virus is a noisome pestilence I won't be afraid but I dwell in the secret place of the most high in the name of Jesus come on give God some more praise